Hello and welcome to 1973 GMC Motorhome episode number 29. In today's episode, uh, first of all, welcome, Happy New Year. It's uh, have made one since last year. It's now March of 2024 and we had a great time last year. Now it's spring. Um, I think the last video I might have made it was about winterizing. But there is a pesky oil leak and we are going to address that issue once and for all i'm going to probably pull off a lot of the front of the motor i'm not sure if it's the main seal in the um, timing chain cover if that's the case i have a main seal and i'll I actually have a, du a double row timing chain to put in there while i'm at it so uh anyway we're gonna start investigating this and see what we find okay. if we look down here we see there's oil and a decent quantity of it in our intake manifold casting also we're very oily on all these surfaces here and it seems like the maybe the fan blows back oil the surface here is very oily so that's why i was thinking maybe the maybe the front main seal was leaking oil and it was just dripping and then blowing back all over everything so that's the theory but we're gonna have to just start taking stuff off and getting in here until we find something okay. so as near as I can figure we had some oil in there and there's there was some oil down in there and I've, I've wiped some out of here but it seems to be coming from this general direction, it could be coming out of here. It also could be coming out of underneath this valve cover. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the AC compressor and probably the AC condenser uh, for two reasons. One, it doesn't work. And two, at some point, if I want AC in here, I'm gonna replace it with vintage air. Once the AC compressor is removed, I can very easily get this valve cover off and put a new valve cover gasket on it. Um, and that would, exp you know, that, that could be where it's coming from. And it's dripping out of the manifold and it's burning off um, because all the oil that's going to the vehicle is on that side. So if we look under here, you can sort of see a coating there. There's a bunch of oil and grime on here on the torsion bar lots of sort of oily deposits um, let's see if we can get up on the other side and do it the other side here i mean torsion bar is all nice and dry everything's dry there's, there's a little bit of oil on the side of the motor there and of course that is our back of our transmission pan but that's not what our problem is so I think I'm gonna get out of here. Go with that valve cover gasket first, and we're gonna eliminate all the AC components. It's one less belt that doesn't need to be down here. Again, it's not doing anything. Um, and if we can get it off, and then we can replace the valve cover gasket, and that takes care of the problem, that's fantastic. Then uh, we can maybe get a vintage AC after that, and we need to take all that shit off anyway. So we're really not doing anything that we don't want to do. I'm not going to use the old R12 AC system anymore, period. Um, and in fact, I'll get a whole new under dash thing as well. So I'm going to start taking the AC system apart. Got my condenser off. There's a mud dauber nest back there. There's the dryer and condenser. This was some kind of cooler at some point. Uh, that was not hooked up when I bought the camper. So anyway, that's stage one. Now our lines to our compressor are going to be loose there's one there this one here is going up into the evaporator so i'm gonna get all this bullshit off of here um, and probably get this line off first just to keep working up here okay so now our evaporator is disconnected we've got a lot of wires down here that are going to nowhere and at some point we 
need to go through and cut all these off, get rid of this mess. I'm not going to do that right this second, but this, uh, this spring we're going to just keep cleaning up bullshit. And um, instead of carrying a big compressor, I do want to get one small new compressor, replace the tank, just so I can just pump up. I'm just going to still leave my airbags manual, but at least I'll have an onboard air compressor that's not taking up a bunch of space. Um, in the back because well, it's the other side that's propane, but the other side compartment I'd like to be able to put a, a generator back in it, but just a uh, a newer inverter generator one of the 2500 watt quiet ones that are like 500 bucks um, and then we'll have Roof AC hell we can even maybe if I can get some kind of satisfactory exhaust Maybe we can even run it while we're driving like the old one and just run our roof AC and call it a day. So we'll see. Another reason this is a very logical first step to take is, okay, we see evidence of oil around there. Um, would it leak forward and then blow back onto the manifold? I don't know. But if, in fact, we're leaking from our, uh, our timing chain cover or main seal or anything like that, which I didn't see evidence of, um, this would have to come off anyway, so I'm very excited to get rid of this air conditioner uh, AC compressor and this bracket which was also The bane of my existence when putting this manifold on because if you remember I had to grind that down drill and tap that bracket out Although we might need to use that for a future AC bracket, but we'll see Okay. So now Got our AC compressor out of there, and the, fortunately it's the forward most belt, so we didn't have to loosen any belts up. I'm going to leave this bracket on here because what it's doing is it's holding the bracket uh, that goes forward to the fan shroud, and also that is bolted through the manifold underneath there, and it's really not getting in the way of anything. Now... We have full access to our valve cover. So the next thing I'm going to do, I want to look under there now and see if we see any, any evidence of leaking under there or in front of it. Okay, so we see a lot of oil. Where's my magic pointer finger? Right there on that line. Um, That is a zip tie. That, those are electric lines. I can't really see up to where the valve cover is. So, uh, at least not with this phone. Definitely coming down from up there somewhere. So after going under there with some light, it really looks like there's definitely oil. I mean, it's, and you can see it. But maybe you can't see it, but it's it's definitely coming down on that side and not on the other side. So. Things that don't hurt are putting a new valve cover gasket on it. And we then we'll put it back together. Since we haven't really done any major dismantling, we'll just put the valve cover gasket on. I'll clean everything off under there with, uh, I'll bring my other jack and I can even pull out my inner fender and really get everything just clean and spotless. And then drive it around again and um, check the oil. Hopefully the oil doesn't go anywhere. If it does, then we look and see where our new oil is. So. I'm going to take this valve cover off and then I'm going to go get a valve cover gasket. All right, so truth be told, this gasket looks like a nice rubber gasket. Doesn't look bad. And then when I look directly down on stuff there, it doesn't look like it's covered with oil. I don't understand where this oil is coming from, but it could have been up in this corner. That looks like the one place that maybe it could have been coming out of. And I noticed that the bottom bolts were very loose. I'm debating about taking this off. I mean, it, again, it's not really doing anything and it's also in the area of the leak. So, you know what, damn it. I guess I'm just gonna take it off and then I'll find some kind of spacer to put that bolt back in. I always like to check the oil after we've been sitting all night so we get a really, really accurate reading. Uh, 
Okay. So right now, we are exactly full. And I added one quart yesterday. So we're gonna put everything back together. We're actually, we don't have room for our oil stabilizer. So we are going to put this back together. Uh, when I say that, just put the valve, new valve cover back on it. And then I'm gonna clean everything really good and then we're gonna go drive it about 60 miles today to and from the house that I'm working on we're gonna put our you know one new Felpro gasket on here and I like these these are rubber they're not cork and they're rather rather thick and gushy so all right let's put that on there button it up and then let's clean this thing okay so we're all put back together here table and we are going to air up the tires air up the one airbag might as well make this look like it's supposed to we'll deal with that and that's more traveling mode all right so now what we got to do is after our trip last fall the last trip we took we had our new final drive ratio and we're going to drain it and uh, put some fresh fluid in it because we haven't done that yet and you can see we put our new aluminum cover on there I can actually drain it with the drain plug which will be nice I'm using these squeezy things for the differential these are new and they work great there's a little bit left in there but I'll Squeeze out what's in there and then squeeze the rest of that in there and anyway. Alright, so here we go. First journey of 2024. Off we go to Lowe's first. Well, we're driving down the road, everything's fine. We have determined, somebody had asked me in an earlier post what the RPMs were. Now my speedometer is off by 10 miles an hour, so when it says I'm going 70, I'm going 60. But at 60 miles an hour, according to my speedometer app, going actually 60, the camper is tacking 25, 2600 RPMs. So still not working that hard. Um, really, this I think would have been better for factory. I wasn't thinking that I got up to 70 earlier. Um, and it was still under three grand. So anyway, this traffic sucks. Um, but you know, it's got to run in traffic as well. So that's that. So we have been driving all over town. Uh, so far, so good. I had the, um, what do you call it? The sensor wire for the temperature gauge unplugged so I went under there and plugged it in and it looked good that was after about 35 miles having a problem here with my coffee so now I got this so now put my coffee in that squinch that up maybe it would be a good idea to screw that down or something, but for now, we can sit on the floor. Okay, we've done all our tasks that we have to do, so now we're headed back home. So, when that says 70, that means we're going 60. Alright, so let me get up to 60. morning going to check our oil now I've been reading online 
this could actually be what has been happening. I drive the thing, it loses a quart. And I fill it up and it loses a quart. Now, some people have been saying that this is a common problem. And if it's at the add line on the dipstick, then drive it again and see if it drops below the add line. So we may do that. And if it doesn't drop below the add line, then your problem is solved. We are, we are below the add line. So that does not look good to me. So, Back in there. What do we got in the drip pan? Oh yeah. Alright, so there's still oil coming out of there. So I'm not gonna crawl under there right now. But uh, the next thing we do uh, is our look in there again and find out where it's coming from and then we maybe do our timing chain and all that area in there so and the water pump seal so all right well the thing sure still runs good and uh it went 60 miles uh, about a quarter or so so i mean i guess technically the couple camping trips i need to make which are about 120 miles would require a couple quarts to get there and back but we're gonna try not do that. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drain the oil and add in six quarts of fresh oil. And then I'm gonna look at the dipstick. And I really hope that it barely shows up on the dipstick, which would mean that I've been overfilling it the whole time, which is a problem, and that we're just burning off way too much oil in the system. So let's drain the oil, let it sit for a while and check the dipstick. Okay, that's what came out of there. Looks like a lot. When I pour this five quarts in the top, then we're going to pour that back into there and see what we got out of there. And I'm hoping there's gonna be six quarts in there because that would be great. That would mean I've just been overfilling it the whole time by two quarts. Thus the oil is spewing out everywhere, which would make sense. So let's hope that's what We're gonna take <clears throat> the more direct route. There's our oil fill. Uh, from outside, but we're just gonna go right into this top oil fill. All right, so I put five quarts of 1040 in there And now we're gonna add some Lucas uh, Oil stabilizer, which is another quart. So we'll have six quarts total I'm gonna start the engine for a second and then we'll let it sit for a couple hours so we can get an accurate reading Well, no such luck after I filled this up. You can't see it on here, but That's trust me. We're at the four quart mark. So I was in fact down uh, below the add mark uh, at four quarts of oil. So that's not good. So I'm gonna go underneath and clean and then we're gonna see if we can identify. It looks like it's coming out uh, somewhere around the uh, water pump area. Okay, here we are back again with the GMC. And we're trying to deal with this oil problem. Now, this is an engine oil fill right here. That engine oil fill goes to there. We also have another engine oil fill that's there. There's our PCV. What we don't have is a crankcase breather. So Probably what's happening, uh, maybe this is one theory that we're going to go with, is if there's any blow-by, um, it's blowing oil probably out of here or out of the front, I mean, wherever the weakest link is, and forcing it out. And if we have a crankcase breather in the top, maybe it'll be able to get that pressure out of there and not force the oil out, so got an idea an old 360 motor 
right there. That's the breather on that. I'm going to pop that off there and see if that fits. By the way, so on my parts motor, here is the oil fill where my tube is with the cap, and that is an elbow where the oil fill would go in. So you'd have oil fill, PVC on one side, and breather on the other. So anyway, let's go back to... miles we've replaced breather let's see what we got here it's been sitting overnight look at that we're at the ad mark but below it so we've lost oil now I already knew this before I started recording this because when I got back home last night, I looked around the engine that I had cleaned off and I kept looking at the front of the engine because it was dripping from the front there. But what was actually happening was it's coming out the back of the manifold. Now, I noticed something, and that is my big fat distributor might be making contact with this and might not be sitting completely down there. So, do I have a leak here, or do I have a leak there? We're going to pull off this manifold. I used silicone last time. I have the gasket with the rubber strip this time. We're going to Put our gaskets on we're going to tack them down and let them sit all these gaskets because last time i'm going to put this on i'm sure i jiggled it so we're going to seal up this manifold again um that the oil is leaking down going down that side running along the engine and coming out so we're going to seal all this back up and then we're going to check our distributor and i might get a different electronic ignition that is smaller because that will give me more air cleaner options, uh, which I don't have right now. Okay, so now that's all clean. I'm going to put these gaskets on. I'm going to put a little bit of silicone on there and stick them on while I'm cleaning off my intake. And then they'll be sort of be set and won't move. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, there's my gaskets on there. I use just little dabs of this underneath on some of the flat surfaces to keep it from moving while I'm scraping off the other stuff. I've got my nice rubber pieces going in between. And then before I put the intake on, the last thing I'll do is I'll put a couple little drops in those corners of the RTV. And we'll bolt this sucker on. Hopefully have a not oil leaky mess uh, intake man. Okay, now that's all cleaned off. Um, we're going to put it on there. Okay, added bonus here. There's the cruise control servo and the mounting plate that I just talk, took off of my parts motor that I'm missing. So I'm going to put that on and maybe I'll get some cruise control out of this operation as well. Okay, I've got my manifold back on. I'm going to reinstall my distributor. I've got my bracket back here for my cruise control. And this carburetor came off that engine and there is the little ball that the cruise control will go onto. So this is gonna be a real easy hookup that I just gotta figure out, you know, which line comes from the vacuum and which line goes to the servo. So we'll figure that out. Okay, now we're all back together. Sands cruise control. We may end up going with a older distributor with coil so we have room for this, but let's see if it'll fire up. Okay, so I've got my new intake manifold gaskets on. We're going to see where this oil's at and then we're going to drive to work again. So we 
are full because I added oil. So maybe maybe a drop below the full mark. It's kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna do stuff around the house this morning, and we're gonna go to work. When I get back from work, we'll check this and we'll see if we've solved our problem this time. Okay. We got our 120 volts coming in. Right now I'm running the air conditioner off the lithium battery and the inverter. Uh, it's drawing about 120 amps at 12 volts um, according to the inverter. Let's go take a look at that. You can see right down there, right at 120. So in layman's terms, if we weren't solar charging, uh, we would be able to run this thing for about two hours before we killed our 230 amp hour battery, slightly less. We're gonna go back and forth down to work again. And I'm really hoping this time, after the uh, replacing of those that intake gasket, um, that come there and back and we're good let's check the oil one more time okay we just wiped it off make sure that was all the way in there there's that last little bit of the dipstick tube yeah i can see it we are it's hard to do this with the camera but it's full so now we'll Put that back in there, drive back and forth and see what we get. Okay, so now we've driven our 60 miles. We're going to check our oil. We're not going to wait until the morning. We're not going to look at it. We're just going to wipe this off. You come on over here with that camera. Ooh, that's hot. And we're going to put this in here and we're going to see what we get. All the way in. Now, I think we are good. It looks to me, oh yes, we're right here where we were. And then you can see it on the other side better. That's where we are. So we have burned no oil in 60 miles. Uh, so the whole time I was messing with this, it is because when I put the aluminum intake on, I used silicone instead of the rubber gasket, and I'm sure that I must have moved it slightly and created a hole through the front and the back. So the lesson is, use those rubber gaskets with the Felpro gaskets I showed you. Um, the next episode, we're going to put air conditioning in this. See you next time.